Today's recipe is a treat, something that my grandma used to make only, I repeat, only on special occasions. A delicious rice dish that will make you come back to the pot for more, like your Oliver Twist. Please, sir, may I have some more? Let's begin. If you've seen any of my other videos and you decided to come back for more, then I assume that you are finding some value in them. If that's the case, please bless me with your kindness by subscribing to the channel as it helps me grow and become better. In return, I promise to bring you higher value content each time. Thank you very much. The ingredients you will need for this recipe are two full chicken thighs with skin and bone and all, one medium-sized parsnip, one medium-sized carrot, two cups of white rice, one large and one medium onion, one garlic clove, 100 grams of black pitted olives, two liters or two quarts of water, two tablespoons of cooking oil, one tablespoon of freshly ground pepper, one tablespoon of salt, and one tablespoon of sweet smoked paprika. Then for the tools we will need a large 5 liter pot with a lid, a wooden spoon to mix with, a sharp knife, a chopping board, a peeler for the root vegetables, a measuring cup, a grater for the carrot and a large frying pan. That's all folks. Now we can begin prepping. First things first. In the large pot, add the two chicken thighs and the two liters of water and start cooking it on high heat until it starts to boil. In the meantime, peel the carrot and the parsnip and if possible, try to use the peels for something better than just the garbage bin. You can feed them to some bunnies, chickens or any homestead animal. But if you live in the heart of the city and the above mentioned options are as alien as Area 51, then consider making a fermented plant juice with some brown sugar so you can feed your house plants Something that will make them grow like their own steroids. Just a thought. But whatever you do, don't give them to your pet dog because they will look at you like you're crazy and you're confusing them for Bugs Bunny. Okay, enough eco lifestyle preaching. Wash the parsnip and the carrot well. Put the parsnip on the side and start grating the carrot. Please make sure to take your time and not rush this stage. Greater cuts usually happen at the tips of our fingers and it's the place where most of our nerve endings are. Do I need to continue? No. So take it easy, focus on what you're doing and don't get greedy and try to grate 100% of that carrot. Keep that last knob of carrot and munch on it. You'll thank me later and your eyesight will improve. Before we continue with the prep, by now the pot with the chicken thighs should be boiling. If the, let's call it, broth is boiling, add the washed parsnip to the pot whole, cover it with the lid, and only now will we start the one hour timer. This soup will be a great base to our dish. Now for the last push in the prep zone. Peel the onions and the garlic clove, wash them well, and then slice and dice them as small as you can safely do it. Take your time, pay attention, and try not to cry too much. In reality, after many years working in restaurants and kitchens, I never found a real and truthful method that can keep you from not crying when you're cutting onions. At best, while trying many so-called tips and tricks, well-kept secrets and occult kitchen knowledge, at best, I looked ridiculous and stupid while cutting onions with my mouth open, holding ice cubes in my mouth and getting toothaches, and many other insane methods. I guess I was insane for believing them. But now we need to slice both onions, but 
Very important, we need to store them on different plates and bowls. The large onion and the garlic diced on one plate and the small one separate. Next, in the frying pan, add two tablespoons of oil, heat it up and add the large diced onion and the garlic to it. We want to cook it at medium heat until it becomes lightly caramelized and soften up. When that's done, take the pan off the heat and let it rest. Next we'll check on the broth and if the one hour has passed, we will take the chicken thighs out and let them cool off on a plate. In the pot we will add the rice, the small diced onion and together with the parsnip we will let them cook on low heat with the lid on until the rice is halfway cooked, meaning between 10 and 15 minutes. When this stage is reached, we will mix the rice well to make sure that it's truly halfway cooked and we'll add the grated carrot, the cooked onion with the garlic and the salt and pepper. Very important here is to take the parsnip out and put it on the plate next to the chicken thighs. Then keep on cooking on low heat for 15 more minutes, mixing through the pot every 5 minutes. I know you're looking at the chicken thighs and wondering, why am I not saying anything about them? Did he forget about them? Is he keeping them just for himself? Is he some kind of asbat who never learned that sharing is caring? Don't worry, I'll tell you straight away. The thighs get seasoned with salt and pepper. They will go in the oven at 200 degrees Celsius for 35 to 40 minutes or until the skin becomes crunchy and delicious and the meat nice and tender. Oh, and put the parsnip on the tray next to the chicken thighs as well. It will add a nice sweet roasted flavor to the final dish if you decide to eat it. I'm not spending too much time on them because they are ingredients, not the main attraction. The rice in its all magnificence is. When the previous 15 minutes have passed, add the paprika and the olives, mix well one last time and cook for 15 more minutes without the lid this time. I promise this is the last cooking segment and after this last 15 minutes, the dish is done and ready to serve. As I mentioned in the intro of the video, this dish is made only on special occasions. It's not easy or quick to make, neither is it cheap, as you need to have all of these ingredients in the house to even consider starting it. But it's delicious, soothing and it feels like a warm hug from my grandmother. Today I really needed that hug, so I spent a good part of my time in the kitchen cooking for it and I can't complain. It tastes almost as good as my grandma used to make it, almost, but nobody has her touch but her. I miss her a lot these days, but before we all start crying like it's the World Onion Dicing Championship, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video and for your interest in these old school recipes I try to bring back to life, just as my grandma taught them to me many years ago. I wish you all the best and I will see you next week. Bye bye. That's a big bite. Hot. But good. You want to try? Mm. No? How dare you? <laughs> I spent all day cooking in the kitchen, sweating in tropical heat. Eat. Hot. Thank you. Okay, let's eat.